Hello there, and Trent's Magua here, and I got yet another MTG Arena video for you guys today. As today, I have listened to the comments a lot of you, quite a few of you actually, have been asking for a Helga deck. And I'm ready to deliver, ladies and gentlemen. I've been cooking. I've been cooking some decks here. Like, I went from Helga, tomorrow we're getting Glar Glarb, I can't even say their names. But I put in the work for these decks, and I'm really, really excited to share. First of all, we got Helga! Ant of the Machines, a deck built around Helga, the Skittish Seer, and Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. We got a Bant mid-range deck here, really playing into Helga's strengths. And what we have here is an upon-entry focused deck. I know I've showcased some strategies revolving around Elish in the past, and Gruff Triplets recently with the, um, the Virtue of Knowledge, but this deck is actually quite different, and it's ultimately built around her. Let's read what Helga does, because a lot of you watching probably don't know what the hell this card does, and go over the ability and why we chose the cards that we chose. So Helga is a Bant 3-drop, green, white, and blue, with a 1-3 stat line, so pretty weak for 3-mana, but one, you know, we're paying the price for the ability instead here. Whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value 4 or greater, you draw a card, you gain one life, and you put a plus one, plus one counter on Helga. When you tap Helga, you can add X mana of any one color, where X is Helga's power. So every plus one, plus one counter that we build on Helga will allow her to later tap for more mana. Spend this mana only though to cast creature spells with mana value four or greater, or creature spells with X in their mana cost, which we do not run in this deck, by the way. In this deck, we, we only focus on the fact that creatures, spells that are value mana four or greater are gonna be cast with Helga and are gonna allow us to continue growing Helga. So I think Helga shines in a, in a deck that has a curve that really exacerbates within like turn four and turn five onwards. So obviously, I mean, that, what I said is very obvious, <laughs> but, Building a kind of deck that's functional like this is easier said than done, actually. Uh, it was quite tricky to really figure out the proper distributions for this deck. Uh, it's gone through many different iterations, but ultimately I'm happy with where we have landed. We have really high quality four drops that will synergize with Helga. We have Elish Norn as a four of in this deck more copies of Elish than in other decks that I featured Elish Norn, and the reason behind this is because if we play Helga on turn three and Helga does not get answered, we can ramp into Elish Norn on four, which can be absolutely backbreaking to a lot of decks. Elish Norn still remains as one of the most impactful cards in standard. I think this card shuts down many, many, many different standard decks, and uh, it just has not stopped being good. It's one of my personal favorite uh, cards from white as it just shuts down so many strategies, but also severely enhances your upon entry plays. And I can not get enough of her. Her stat line reminds me of Swain from Legend of Runeterra, which kind of gives me even more of a, <laughs> a bias towards her, I guess. But being able to run four copies is really strong. And we're able to do so, like I said, because we ram into her with Helga. Let's take a look at the other creatures that we're running. As you see, on turn two, for two mana, we only run a full set of the Pond Prophet in this deck. Everything else are spells. And then our creatures lie in turns four, five, and six here. Uh, for four mana, we have Dream Do and Transfer. The more I play this four drop, the more I love it. Uh, it's fantastic against aggro decks by just shutting down attackers. Matches up really well into the one drop mouse from Mono Red that has Valiant and uh, will deal direct damage to your life points when it dies equal to its power because we don't actually kill it, we just like stun it and freeze it. And I really like uh, that example. That that comes into play a lot when you're facing Mono Red with this deck. Dream Do and Transfer also uh, shines in mid-range matchups, but also in reactive matches as well because of the flexibility of its ability. The fact that I can use this to halt aggression when I need to breathe for a little bit as I'm, you know, playing into my own game plan, but I don't want to die. Or we can use it to tap one of our creatures, uh, put a bunch of stun counters on it, and then draw two cards. It may seem like we're full, fundamentally nullifying one of our creatures doing this, but because we have access to um, spells like the Swift Spiral Adventure from the Twinning Twins, 
we can bounce a bunch of our stuff and undo all the stun counters that we applied onto it, uh, which is really nice. But the card draw is very powerful, and these upon entry effects are doubled with Elish Norn naturally. So Dream Do really works super well with Helga. This, and, and them both being frogs, alongside our two drop being frogs, also makes our Cavern of Souls more reliable. Uh, even though most of the time we're going to be using the Cavern of Souls to enable the Gruff Triplets instead. We have a full set of Dream Do and Transfer. And then, like I mentioned, we have uh, three copies of Twining Twins. Twining Twins is very good in this deck because while it does not have an upon entry effect itself it does allow us to bounce a bunch of our other creatures and also allows us to counter removal onto those creatures while getting to re-trigger their upon entry effect as well so it's an extremely important spell for this deck the adventure and the main reason why we're running this but then the body is not bad at all we have a four mana four four that will proc helga uh, while also giving us a flying with vigilance and war with a 4-4 stat line. It's just honestly really solid. And speaking of solid, we have Beza, the Bounding Spring, as a two of here. It's an upon entry effect. Again, with Elish, we'll trigger twice. It's a four drop, which means it'll trigger Helga. And this card is amazing against aggro. Uh, it's particularly useful as well against control decks where they have card advantage in hand over you. And ultimately, regardless of the matchup, there's always one of the effects that's going to proc, and we're going to be able to potentially proc rocket twice and i like it a lot as an inclusion in this deck as a card that ultimately does not require as much synergy to be good because in a vacuum this card is just really powerful but on this deck it can go even further than that and i like that a lot about it as then of course our win condition a three of of the gruff triplets this card with elish norn is stonks we get to trigger it twice it's also stonks with the twinning twins because we can swift spiral into the main body and generate even more tokens and uh, it's just overall an amazing win condition that i cannot get enough of man i just i love playing this card it's it's legitimately good it's legitimately powerful and especially against mid-range matchups like they just cannot handle this motherfucker <laughs> i love him for that and he's also edgy and cool because people don't play him for some reason you know because people love to net deck but don't realize that there's so much viability with this, so many different cards in magic that's kind of like the point of my channel right uh and this is a card that i really want to showcase even more than once because it's just a really dope strong card and a strong win condition to build your deck around as we have no more lies get lost Ariat's lullaby is a one-off and two copies of destroy evil these are different sources of two mana removal to allow us to survive against aggressive decks but also to give us proper enchantment interaction that's the benefit of playing white we're able to deal with enchantments easy and we get to incorporate some clutch counter spells as well that protect us primarily from board wipes which is the biggest issue this deck can run into uh, so running uh, counter spells as we have blue in the mix is very nice when it comes to the lands we're running a very high density of lands here ladies and gentlemen we have 27 lands because we want to curve out into six every single game we do not we can handle mana flood because we have a lot of card draw inherently in the deck we can handle card uh mana flood way better than mana screw not being able to curve out into our fourth land is a massive issue we never want to face. So we run 27 lands that also help us run enough sources of all three band colors as well. Cavern of Souls, like I said, it's, it's either for Warrior, for Gruff Triplets, or for Frogs. And then we got all these different distributions that I've uh, put a lot of uh, careful thought into. But I'm not going to ramble it for like for four minutes. It's just a bunch of lands and they go well together. Okay, Timmy? Let's try it. You, you'll see what I'm talking about so yeah that's where i'll leave it at my deck decks are getting faster you know i'm proud of myself i think i'm getting more straight to the point and i really really enjoy this deck uh i put like i said a lot of thought into it this this was a, a long brew but it's extremely satisfying super fun and i really wanted to showcase helga in a strong light and i think i did with this video so hopefully you guys enjoyed thank you for watching stay tuned for daily mtg arena content we ain't stopping never always a new video with a new deck here every single day so subscribe. It's free. Free, it's good. Hope you enjoy the games. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, here we go. Let's bring in the Ant of Machines. Cracking our fingers for dramatic intensity. Let's see if we can get some climbing going on. This is a deck that I put a lot of thought into. Uh, it definitely is not what I initially had in mind when I wanted to design a deck around Helga, but 
Ever since I made that deck with the Gruff Triplets and the <laughs> and the Virtue of Knowledge, I just I've I really like this play pattern, and I think Helga fits this show so damn nicely. As we have a five lander, ladies and gentlemen, a five lander that I am actually going to keep because I am insane. I'm going to lead off with the Meticulous Archive to get that blue source of mana in. We're going to get that No More Lies. Anything that's not a land, we keep, essentially. As they go with the Tidy Bones right off the bat. And we are going to follow up with the Razor Verge Thicket. Now we have No More Lies enabled. And I guess we're going to enable it again. Because right now, I'm playing uh, Helga. Helga is vulnerable to cut down. And I'm expecting it to go down. So I, I want to actually play her alongside some protection. I'm going to drop the Restless Anchorage, though. Because I do still need that second source of blue mana. In case I want to be able to back-to-back -back no more lies here. So let's do this. Because right now, this is just pinging us for one. Anything else we can counter. And we're going to play into that. Like that. Bro, I didn't even read that. <laughs> but I just got rid of it immediately. Um, hmm. Now's the turn. Even though we have Get Lost and No More Lies, now is the turn to develop the Lush Portico. We're definitely expecting, if we play Helga, we're definitely expecting her to be removed. Right now, we're not being pressured. The moment Helga goes down, the Tiny Bones becomes a big problem. So I'm, I'm still, like, adamant on not rushing into this. Especially while I still have counter spells enabled. I have things to do. I'm gonna still be taking this damage. Add two mana in combination. Spend this mana only to cast dragon spells. I'm not going to counter that, but I am going to kill it. And now I'm going to play Helga with No More Lies backup. When a measure enters the revealing... Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say No More Lies to that. Okay, so because we took this line of play... We managed to develop Helga and protect her from removal, unless there's like a cut down there. Okay, just land. Okay. Now I'm going to use Helga, I'm going to tap her, and I'm going to cast Elish Norn and draw a card off of her. That's why I wanted to protect Helga, because Helga also allows me to start drawing cards and not run out of gas as easily. Tiny Bones is still a thing. They top deck the, um, the Vadmir. Sacrifice the other creatures, you may put a creature card for... Okay. Well, that's evil. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that this guy is evil. So we're going to take this hit. Fate's Tempest is there. When it enters or attacks, exile where X is the number of creatures control, power four or greater. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just give her to this. Because um, Elish is going to deny that. Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, is going to counteract this entry effect. And what we're gonna be doing now is. Triggering the Restless Anchorage. In full swinging. Now, the thing here is... I could give the Helga a counter. Or I could enable Get Lost. 
I don't have to get lost at the very end of their turn. I'd rather use this to pump up my Helga, give it another counter potentially, and uh, get rid of that Helga. Develop the Sea Chrome Coast, call that a turn. They're probably gonna play that five drop now, but again, Elish Norn will counteract that. And now, now we're cooking. Because with Helga, we can tap for three. For three now, baby. And with Elish on the board, the Gruff Triplets become the Quintuplets. <laughs> the power! And now we're good. Ladies and gentlemen, now... We are golden, set to go. This time we keep the mana open. We don't commit the um, the Restless Anchorage because we'd rather keep the, the Get Lost available. And we already have the Gruff Triplets in. This is massive. Now any sort of attack they want to go for, Is denied. <laughs> oh, level up! <clears throat> that was a clean way to start things. And that's the power. That's the power of Helga right here. Really good showcase for this card game one. In which we just follow the the deck's game plan, which is to win with the Gruff Triplets with Elish Norn and shutting down upon entry effects. Really happy with um, our decisions here. Like, they did have a source of removal, so we didn't rush Helga into it uh, because we had a bunch of counters in, in our opener, and we played according to that, and I think that really is the reason why we ended up winning, so good shit. Round two. Should be working. Well, I can't relate to that because I am working. It's my jab to play card games. Let's keep this. Three lander, all banned colors available. Pawn Prophet, Helga, very promising hand. We can lead off with the Lush Portico. Uh, keep that Cavern of Souls because we do have the Gruff here and we do need to curve out to six at least. So we won't shy away from the land there. Now we're gonna drop the Pawn Prophet. Get somebody, something on the board. Even though we could enable No More Lies, we're not really like, we use this to protect our key creatures. We don't need to, like, just play passively because of it. Another Botanical Sanctum here. I'm gonna swing. I'm gonna swing. I'm gonna try to play Helga. Because I see those colors. I see Azorius, and I'm expecting counter spells, so I am gonna try to get Helga in. Having this Cavern of Souls is really nice. Helga could die here very easily. You know, because that's what control decks do, right? They remove threatening creatures, but um, so far... Oh. I did want to counter that. I'm not going to tap Helga because white has some resources to deal with tapped creatures. And I'm going to try to make it as... As hard as possible for that not to happen. I don't have the, the, the Twinning Twings. I only have one source of white mana. So going for the No More Lies there. I really want to try to enable this Gruff Triplets on five. Though we could be facing some board wipes as well. We gotta take that into account. That's the case there. Okay. I'm going to develop the Growth Triplets now, uh, pumping up Helga, drawing through my deck.
They may go for a board wipe here. That's why they attack with Beza. Especially into stuff like, like rough triplets. So I'm just gonna jump here. I'm actually not gonna dive these in because I'm expecting... Uh, Now I'm gonna play the Dream Do and Tancer. Like we 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 did expect this board wipe from them. Wait, they didn't stop. That's so annoying. Like, I, w I wanted to stop in the second main phase. I, I, I don't know why I didn't. Was I too... Didn't really matter because they had a counter with a Were Fox bodyguard. And they forgot to read, apparently. This time I'm going to put the stop beforehand on the main phase uh, because of the way the the swift spiral works. I want to have this return at the end of the at the end phase, but if you don't manually stop it, like the game will skip through through main phase two, like nothing. They deduce, they draw. We're trying to stabilize here. Like they've had some strong plays against this. Why is it not stopping, bro? What in the actual fuck is happening? Why is it not stopping? Like, I put the stop here. Can somebody explain to me what I'm doing wrong? This is really obnoxious, because I'm, I'm really missing out on this shit. Like, I don't understand. I really don't. What the fuck, man? That is really annoying. We get countered anyways, right? But... But still, like, why... Okay, let, let me try again. Do I have to click on the right there? Oh, because this is my turn. Oh, that's so unintuitive. It's fucking garbage. That's so unintuitive. It's so stupid. Okay, we just, we just draw lands. They sack this to gain life. We are uh, flooding, unfortunately. We're flooding and we're giving them time to come back on us. Oh my goodness, that was so frustrating. Like, why does it not work for both? This is so dumb. It's so dumb. That's that's a bit of an a UI failure right there, man. Like, come on. I'm gonna stop bitching about it, but Jesus. Okay, that's good. They're stalling. Now I'm just like paranoid that the game is gonna skip my 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 main phase too. I'm just like super paranoid about it. Okay, so now before the main phase two, I kind of would rather tap this though, because I I want I want to tap something, but I, I'd rather actually tap the restless anchorage, or maybe even play that. Okay, let's let's do it right though. I can't. Yeah, I can do it. I can do this, into this, into this.
That's exactly the kind of draw that we need. We have a counter spell ourselves that is enabled here. I should be tapping the Dream Druid and Trancer, to be honest. But it also makes it so that, like... I just want Elish for the ability more than anything. And we just drew a bazillion cards. Destroy all creatures. How much mana you got left? Two. Two mana left. So let's say no to that. Let's go! Okay. Okay, all right, that was a tight one. Kanu. Kanu is getting close to that mythic rank. How about we try to derail them a little bit? We keep a four lander, we got the meticulous archive. We have the source of, bl of band uh, available to us. So it's not the perfect hand, but it is a playable hand. As you can see, we have a high density of land cards. I'm gonna play on curve here. Like, if they have an answer for Helga, they do. It is what it is. I don't really have graveyard interaction, so I'm not worried about this thing, like, exiling my stuff. Okay, they don't deal with Helga immediately, which is amazing. Because we have... We have more than, I, more than enough sources of white mana, so we don't need to prioritize these burst lands right now. I do want to tap uh, Helga here, because I, I could draw into a tapped land. I don't mind the Preacher of the Schism as, as much as I do mind the ramp. With this, we can just nullify that. And we do end up drawing into a tap land, which we use now to surveil afterwards. And that's honestly, like, not a bad card. the preacher of the schism we do not block there as long as we we are healthier we're good we have helga again now we do want to play the, the triplets so you can see like helga provides us two mana for it so that's fantastic um at this point i'm just gonna drop this forest i think Though to be fair, I, I made the same I made the mistake that I tried not to make last turn. But we play gruff triplets. We keep these in the back. Clifftop, look out for our opponent. You know this would be a great matchup to put in Elish here. But right now Helga is just. Putting in the massive work, making it easier and easier for me to chain. Every time I, I get a plus one, plus one counter on Helga, man, it's just... Now she taps for three. She taps for three mana, which means this and this is enough to cast this. Watch. Watch this combo. We're going to tap you, and then we're going to tap you for blue. We're going to play a Dream Do and Tanser. But... We're going to be tapping this. I said but, but now I just want to play Elish. Now any upon entry effect, like the cliff top lookout that they have right there, will be nullified.
I'm gonna block into one of the preachers. Destroy you allows me to deal with the other ones. Okay, so what do you do during your turn? Creatures you control have X proof. Each creature you control with toughness. Okay. Okay. So it's that kind of deck. Alright, interesting. Uh, what I want to do is I want to lead off with the Pawn Prophet because the Pawn Prophet will draw me two cards now. <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> we just have, we're definitely like winning the board here. Like with Elish Nord on board, we're just going to be able to pick them off slowly but surely. I tapped this because I was aiming to kill my own. Like that's why, why also why we play Ariat's Lullaby because I can tap my own creatures with the Dream Do and Transfer and then I can kill them. Gain two life and pump the other gruff triplets. But to be honest, I was kind of like, at this point, I just wanted to like fish for a way to bounce this to get some extra copies on the board and just completely blow the opponent back. Perhaps that approach is a little bit greedy. But if anything, this game really showcased the power of Helga, man. If Helga is unanswered, this deck just pops off like crazy, really, really fast. And is able to just overcome any other mid-range strategy, I think. Good shit. Let's go again. Wingardium Leviosa. Very high density in lands, but we have Pond Profit. And uh, with this kind of deck, it's better to flood than to screw. That's why we have such a high, uh, such a high land density. Because it's the, the deck just crumbles if it doesn't curve out every single turn. So we do keep that despite the high density of lands in our in our in our hand, and we get rewarded by just constantly picking up cards now, making use of the pawn profits that cycle through our deck, and all of a sudden we have a really promising curve. They develop the Wander Tail Mentor. This could be a raccoon deck. I could utilize this, but I'm I'm just gonna play another one of you, honestly. I'm gonna live with the ability of them to ramp here. Now I'm gonna develop the Botanical Sanctum. And I'm gonna call that a turn. Just cycling through my deck. Instead of because I could have used the Swift Spiral here. Okay, another another raccoon. Okay, they're going in with a ramp. Um I can slow that down. By playing the Dream Do Entrancer and just uh, denying them the ramp a little bit. There's Muerra. Muerra is a bit problematic. Because Muerra can give them so much mana. Oh. Elish. Elish Norn. Mother of Machines. Whatever it is they, they're gonna do, a lot of times red, like, rule decks generally rely on upon entry effects. And Ellen, Elish, can shut that down. Look at that. Denied! Oh, but now they're gonna... Okay, never mind. Well, shit. I'm gonna develop Dream Through Dream Do and Transfer. I should have perhaps like not rushed Elish Norn, but we got a removal out of it. The problem is this Moira is just gonna keep providing them with value.
I'm gonna do this now, bring this back again and draw two more cards off of this, trying to find our resources here. Okay, we can get rid of Moira. Which is really important here. And hold the line. Stop drawing so many lands, though. Like, I'm flooding like in, like, it's insanity. The amount, you guys see, like, the flood here, like, there's a limit. To answer this muerra. If I can't answer this muerra, they're just never gonna run out of gas. I let it slip me again. I let it slip me again. I, I forgot to click on that. Oh my goodness. Drop this. Keep the gruff triplets in the back. Bring back the dream deuce entrancer. Tap you again so I can draw two more cards. Doesn't seem like they hit anything big, just two two of these, okay. Could have been worse. They're really building up, but so are we. Like this is a very creature dynamic matchup here. They have the Vaultborn Tyrant there. We do we use the entrancers block through and we're gonna try to quite simply overpower their oh Wait, what <laughs> you know what Moira is evil Let's kill Moira. We don't want to play the Gruff Triplets yet because they have another Brotherhood's End that's going to fade out. It's going to fade out soon.
What? <laughs> what the fuck? Warrior. Helga? Into triplets. Now that the Brotherhood ends out of the way. Now's when we apply the pressure. We come back with the twinning twins. This game has been bizarre as hell. But we have the ability to destroy evil. I repeat, we can destroy evil. That uh, sure, yeah. One down. <laughs> Two angry ass motherfuckers to go. Okay. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of you. Enough of your mentoring. Let's go! We fought for that one! Alright, Atagal. With your spooky avatar, you'll be our final opponent. Uh, I mean, that last game really taught us... That Flood can also potentially be an issue. This hand just feels like it's lacking. So I'm gonna mulligan, and I'm happy I did. We keep the three lands. And drop one Dream Dew in transfer. Um, could be a toxic deck. I say as I see the toxic card. How are we matching up against this? Because right off the bat, we're, um, it's problematic. We're going to drop this. And we're going to play the Pawn Prophet. We need to develop a body to trade into that. They just play that. We're at two poison counters. All right. Okay, we find Helga. Problem with Helga is that she doesn't undo poison counters, so we are... Yeah, we're in massive trouble. We can draw two cards for nothing there. Okay. Well, I mean, now is when we just have to... Do our very best to prevent them from keep... Keeping doing this, so let's go with the Dream Do and Trancer. Let's tap this thing so it doesn't get away with just, like, single-handedly killing us. This is, uh, yeah, we're in, we're in a rough situation here. They can't trigger the Merricks. I'm gonna no moralize that because it allows them to proliferate and keep finding key pieces. We take out the force that we have to counteract that. And now we play the Cavern Souls. That, that means they must have some counter spells. So we're going to go with this into Warrior. And we're going to play the Gruff Triplets without them being able to counter. They definitely have counter spells. Definitely have counter spells and we need to pull the trigger here. Ok, 
Okay. Need to swing here. Way to play the Dream Do Entrancer. Counter target spell unless the opponent. Uh, okay. So now I'm gonna, in response, I'm gonna go for the Swift Spiral onto the Gruff Triplets to reactivate its effect. Have a blocker here ready for them. Keep in mind they can generate these Mirics, so we, we gotta make sure that we can counteract this. So I wanna play you again. to tap you so I can attack freely and put them on the clock here. And now we swing with the triplets. We connect. They Merix, but we have a blocker. They Merix, but we have a blocker. We just cannot let them get that. The moment we get that eighth poison counter, they can easily top deck into, into double pro proliferate chain. You know, there are ways for them to do that. But if we stay at seven in this situation, we get them. Nice.